So World War One Part Two conditions in those trenches. What was it like for those soldiers and living in the trenches in the eastern and the western front? Well, it was wet and it was muddy. Um, here are the trenches again. You can see another aerial view. You can see the pock marks made from the uh, artillery shells uh, and then the different trenches that were dug on both sides. And they were super muddy after the rains and cold in the winter. And this often led to infections and men getting um, something called trench foot, which is where your feet are really wet and all the time and you get an infection and it's really nasty. Um, they were also infested with lots of rats which uh, carried diseases and here are some of the muddy trenches you can see the mud flowing through the middle um, and so the rats men would often in their free time catch them and kill them and play games with them you also had the threat of gas attacks and chemical weapons were first used on the battlefield mustard gas was a big one that was used most but also chlorine gas was used uh, during World War One, and early in the war gas masks were really primitive um, and I can show you one in my classroom uh, but later in the war they got more sophisticated they initially started by just peeing on rags to sort of neutralize the gas and breathe through that gross fun World War One facts you'd have really big spurts of activity and then some long stretches of boredom where you hoped you got to read letters, sing songs take naps um, etc. So here are some men in their trench sewing some shirts, repairing them. Um, so it was really tiresome and boring a lot of the time and then it was super crazy excitement the rest of the time. So this war of attrition where so many resources were being poured into it became a total war. So World War I was fully industrialized and mechanized war. Military leaders were unprepared for the impact of these weapons on outmoded strategic notions. The need for full industrial support for each nation's war effort ultimately required the mobilization of entire societies. Whether democratic or not, the nations involved came to implement a national coordination that was almost totalitarian or dictatorial in nature. So, like I said earlier, women went to work in factories. If you couldn't um, serve as a, a soldier or a nurse, you were to be saving and conserving food. Food was rationed. Um, you were to grow a garden, to grow your own vegetables, or you were to join the military. All these industrial tools led to new weapons and we mentioned in imperialism the machine gun and it just got more sophisticated and more deadly the browning machine gun was used by the british and american forces it was water cooled and fired 450 to 600 rounds a minute um, mass killing basically the other one was gas which was one of the soldiers greatest fears they were all issued gas masks and you can see the different varieties horses and dogs on the field um, also used gas masks and horses were in this war quite extensively. Um, poison gas was first used by the French in 1914 and then all the sides started using it. Uh, so gas masks were needed to hopefully keep you from going blind or being choked or asphyxiated. Other new weapons were tanks. Um, they were first used by the British in 1916 takes frightened the Germans but they were rather unreliable and they broke down a lot it wasn't until World War II that they became more effective the other one was the U-boat or a submarine in the naval ships so Germans perfected the submarine and they started to wage unrestricted submarine warfare meaning they would take out any ship whether it was a passenger ship or a military ship they did not discriminate so that is actually ultimately what got the United States involved in the war um, later in the war years. We stayed out of it for a long time. So here's an image of a uh, German U-boat torpedoing a U.S. ship. Airplanes were used for the first time. The first airplanes were used for observation and then later pilots were actually holding bombs out the side and dropping them. 
Uh, and then you also had um, people who mounted machine guns on them and they started dogfighting in the skies as well towards the end of World War I. So all this fighting goes on. The United States does end up involved in that. You'll learn more about that in U.S. history. And by 1918, people are just, four years later, war-weary. They're tired. They're over it. They're ready for peace. So the U.S. entered the war in April of 1917. We stay in the war for about a year and a half. And on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918, the war was called to a halt, and this term is called an armistice, when you sort of cease fighting. And all the parties agreed to meet and negotiate a peace treaty. This peace treaty, uh, this peace conference was held at the Palace of Versailles outside of Paris, and it became known as the Treaty of Versailles. It was not very fair. At this point, Austria-Hungary is dissolved. They don't exist anymore, although they were one of the biggest empires in Europe at the, at the beginning of the war. They were gone. So most of the allies blamed Germany for the causing of the war, probably unfairly. So Germany takes the brunt of it. They're forced to pay what are called reparations, to essentially pay all of the nations um, for getting everybody into the war. So they had quite a bit of war debt. They were forced to give up territory that they had gained, primarily that territory of Alsace-Lorraine that the French um, were living in. They were forced to dismantle their army and scuttle their navy. Literally, um, their naval ships were bombed in the English Channel by the English Navy after the treaty was signed. And they were forced to take responsibility. So um, there was a clause in the treaty called the War Guilt Clause, and so they were forced to take responsibility for the war. Pretty unjust. So you can start to see we are not setting Germany up for success, really after World War I. So what's the legacy of World War I? Well, first of all, there were huge casualties. We looked at this earlier, but you can see Russia had huge casualties. France had lots of men wounded, um, and so did Germany. They also had quite a few war dead. Austria-Hungary, huge. They lost their whole country. Um, you have Ger Greece down here. Montenegro, Bulgaria, I'm sorry, this is Romania, I thought that was Russia, here's Russia right here, Great Britain, here you can see the number of World War I military deaths, the Central Powers were in blue and the Allies were in red, now keep in mind there were more Allies than there were Central Powers, um, but the Allies took really, really heavy um, casualties and deaths, and in fact Russia really took the brunt of it here. But they're pretty close on par with what Germany lost as well. So what consequences does that have? Well you have an entire lost generation. Lo nations lost an entire generation of young men, potential workers, to war death and injury. That has huge economic impacts down the road. Um, imagine one million young men the ages of 18 to 30 just disappearing from your society today, that would devastate your economy. So it had Im economic impacts. Many men came back with psychological issues. At the time they called it shell shock. Today we call it PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, people self-medicated with morphine and al alcohol. And so you ended up with a lot of these veterans who did survive also having uh, drug and alcohol issues and unable to work. So some questions that come up. Why did we end up in another world war when this was supposed to be the war to end all wars? How did the events of World War I lead to oppression? We're going to get to that tomorrow with what happens to the Armenians in the Ottoman Empire. And then how do we remember difficult history? How do we honor those who gave their lives and sacrificed um, how do we honor those who were oppressed? How do we keep it from happening in the future? Those are all the sorts of things that have come out of World War I. And that, my friends, is the end. And apparently, it doesn't want to go any further. Back to the beginning. All right, see you guys later.